Hi everyone and welcome to the first of I hope many tutorials. Um, thank you to Tracy from the Odd Kennels for this amazing opportunity. Um, <clears throat> so a little bit about myself. Um, I am essentially a landscape painter. I live in Devon. Um, I, at the moment, am very into tonalism. Um, the great masters in the 19th century did these amazing paintings which were studies of bringing light into a painting and less about what the painting actually is. Um, it's about putting lights next to darks and creating um, very interesting and moody kind of pictures. I'm using paper today. I, I normally paint on canvas. Um, I'm going to take you through uh, doing a understudy uh, sketch um, for your painting and then a couple of glazes. Um, glazing is, is really amazing. Um, it can change a picture totally, it can warm it up, cool it down, um, bring areas to the foreground, do really amazing things with colour. To explain what I'm talking about with the glaze, um, it's when I mix more liquid um, with the paint and it, there's less paint and more medium, so the paint is thinner, so you can put a very light wash of a colour over and you can still see what you've painted underneath it will come through. Uh, that's that's the glaze. Um, so, uh, and I'm really enjoying that process at the moment. We're going to use two colours for this underpainting, um, and they are going to be burnt sienna and sap green. Um, I might even use a little bit of um, red ochre rather than the burnt sienna. But yeah, we, you know, whatever. We're wanting to create <clears throat> a really dark, um, base to start with and you'll see as, as I, it becomes pretty self-explanatory um, and it's it's great fun so you're going to need what I'm going to use today is a paper plate um, it's one that has a laminate over the top so obviously the paint won't just seep in I just find that it's easier when doing a tutorial like this to not be um, moving to my table which is where the where, where the camera is um, otherwise throughout the painting you get a really beautiful view of my ear um, so I'm going to mix them on and then I'll, I'll put the two colours on and um, show you how much liquid I use and then we're going to go straight in and start the painting. Right, so um, this is the sap green and I did go with the red ochre and that is liquid. Liquin is a, a medium that helps the oil paint to dry quicker. It also helps with the spreadability. So I'm just going in, cheap brush, working it in. Just go in here. So. And if you want, you see here where I'm getting these, um, you can just add a little bit more liquid to the brush and it goes a hell of a lot further. I'm just also dipping into a bit more green because we want to make this color a little bit darker. Let's stop that irritating bang. Sorry, it stops in a second. Go mad. Don't worry about um, putting green into the sky or anything like that. It's fine. 
we're, we're very really not worried about um, too much at this stage. We want that to kind of become The other thing that you're going to need throughout today's tutorial is some kitchen towel. So I'll just plop that under my hand. So what we're really wanting to do now is just create lines, textures, different brush strokes. Sorry, uh, this is a little bit fingers and thumbs at the moment because I'm trying to stop this board from rattling because it won't secure into my easel. Um, but once I'm um, being a little less vigorous, it will all improve, hopefully. Right, done with brush. We'll plop that down. And we're going to just carry on. Let's just lighten up where we want our horizon to be because we know that on the horizon the stuff gets less clear go through quite a lot of kitchen towel. The other thing that you can use is a, a Q-tip or an earbud. And I'm just going to dip, let's just get a clean piece. Dip this kitchen towel into some liquid and I'm going to just rub that in there to just loosen some more of that colour up. Just folding and making sure that the edge of my tissue paper firm creating areas of light.
very careful to always be using a clean part of the towel because otherwise you're going to end up just making your colors all muddy I am going to use just a smidge of Payne's Grey. I'm just going to put it onto the same palette. Just to help me create, you'll see now, just a bit more depth. And maybe a bit of grass or something here in the foreground. See me disappear what I'm doing is I am just um, giving my brushes a bit of a just getting off the residue paint I'm not using thinners um, or turpentine or white spirits Right, I'm starting to introduce as well a little bit of white. Using the side of the brush. I'm just using the brush Paints grey in with the green. Create a bit of shrubbery through here.
At the moment, I'm using a mixture of the sap green and the Payne's Grey. Um, I'm still really keeping it um, to three colours, as you see. Um, I've added about five others since. But yeah, um, very easy to add. And if you think you've gone a bit too far, you can either um, use your fingers. And we just want to create some light into there. So what I'm doing, just remember, journalism is all about light and dark. So I'm crushing up paper, to kitchen towel, and and I'm moving it each time so that I'm not getting more paint on. Then you can go in with another, I'm using small brushes because of the size of this canvas. With another brush, I'll just grab some liquid. So I've just wet the tip of the brush with the liquid. And you can Again, still not, don't be too fussy at this stage. Just clean that paint off. Grab some more liquid. When I say clean that paint off, just wipe it on a kitchen towel or um, like I have these um, bamboo towels from uh, my day job as a, as a hairdresser. Um, these are sustainably sourced and biodegradable bamboo towels. Just bringing the foreground a little bit darker. Just put that brush down. Grab some clean kitchen towel. Actually, that's not looking bad. Just to stop and recap. What I know about landscape painting is um, that in order to create depth, um, which I explained in my free tutorial that's um, available as well to download. Um, you need to create dark, medium, light to the horizon, light from the horizon, medium, dark um, to create depth. So you can see we're starting to get some really, really amazing textures and I'm bearing that in mind. When I set off on doing this today, I didn't set out to do anything that we have created thus far um, it's all just as 
as the painting has developed. at this stage. Or removable. Let's just put some darker twigs and branches and things in here. Let's see, there's one. That's what's happening. That's good for now. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm, I'm wanting to, don't worry about this tree that kind of just bluntly ends there. Um, I'm going to work on that um, because this will all be foliage up here um, and so will this. So um, let's bring in a little bit of a smaller brush. So mixing. The paint's grey. Just putting a bit of tone into that base of that tree because there's there's a, a single tree and there's a tree that branches into two branches. In case you hadn't seen that yet, just give that a wipe. one wipe. So I'm going to just soften all of that and then bring some back. <laughs> dark in there for now. Just adding a little bit more paint grey. Then we'll just take some just to Bring some light into that, and just soften all those edges a bit. Yeah, because this will be the darker, that will be the medium. Right, so getting back to um, where we were, I'm going to grab another brush. Um, this time I'm going to use, again, most of the brushes I use are just cheap hardware brushes. Um, and we're going to start with some little bit of Payne's Grey and I'm mixing some white
Don't worry about the lines that we've created. We can add those again later if we decide. Just dunk the end of the brush into some white that I have on my palette. So it's titanium white. What do we know about the horizon? We want that to be lighter. And notice that I'm working with the brush this way. Um, that's because I can see where I'm going down to the horizon. Right, let's get some foliage in here that we can start to see so that the tree starts to make a bit more sense. So I'm going back to the sap green and the paint gray. Just really sorry for the continual bump. And let's put foliage around here as well. Constantly dipping into the liquid because that's what makes the whole thing just spreadable. Just bring some tree over the over the stem under the right back to our tissue paper kitchen towel This needs where is that brush? Well, that happens quite a lot as well. Oh, here it is. <laughs> we need some. looks a bit better.
which is just tweak just a little bit. Things like that tree trunk there would have some shadow. Take where you get areas like, oh, oh, like that, it's like paint all over you, um, like that. Just go in very gently, and just smudge that in. You can also, if you're wanting even less. Definition. You just go in and let's clean that brush off. Let's push that back. But don't obliterate all the marks like I've just done. <laughs> I'll try to keep some. I mean, just go in and just. Um, Let's just wipe this brush off. that out a bit. Just put a bit of green into here. Taking my palette knife as well and just creating interesting textures.
just tweaking and having a bit of fun, um, you can create loads of really cool textures. Barks of the tree. Just scraping back some light in our painting. Hopefully you will have gotten a pretty good idea of where we're going and what's going to happen. We'll work on this more, um, but we have, as you can see, quite a lot of detail. Um, in our sketch. And you can just carry on adding as much or as little as you would like. And the lighter you press, you can use anything for mark making. Right, so at this stage, we're going to stop and um, let this dry. And tomorrow we will go in and start with um, doing some glazes on here.
So those are the results of today's sketch. This sketch I will glaze and add bits to and develop the painting, but I have a tonal study um, and in my sketch, which was very quickly created, you can see we're starting to get really amazing detail, like the bark is looking great um, over here. I don't know if we can zoom in enough, hopefully, but you know, great textures on the grass, really cool stuff happening. So I look forward to developing this painting further, um, but for today that needs to dry. Um, and um, I hope I've inspired you to create a few quick sketches. Um, they're really fun to play with afterwards as well with, with different glazes and things. Um, so I look forward to seeing you in the next part. Hopefully you're still with me. I look forward to seeing you in the next part um, where, we, where this will be dry and we can go ahead and glaze. Welcome back. Um, I, as you can see, um, same top, um, but I've had a haircut. We're gearing up to, to go back on Saturday um, and after lockdown. So um, it was time. I um, hadn't had a haircut for the whole of lockdown uh, with solidarity with all the customers that couldn't. Um, and it feels really great to have had a haircut. I feel fresh and young again. Um, so back to the painting. Um, I've, you know, it's dried sufficiently that we could go in and glaze. Um, I am, however, going to just add a little bit more to the painting. So, um, things like, um, I've noticed that I've lost the, the, the gap, uh, between the two tree trunks that are there, the branches. So I need to sort that out. Um, and there's some things that I'd like to add before I go ahead and glaze this. So perfect chance to do it today. Um, and I will be finishing off by showing you some glazing on um, a painting that I did. Well, the, actually the painting that I did for the 10 minute sketch um, that hopefully you've all seen. Today's palette. So uh, again, I'm using a throwaway disposable paper plate. Um, it has a slight lamination, which I'm sure you can see. So on the um, palette today, I have again, sap green. I have some cerulean blue. I have some phyto blue over there. I have some paint gray and titanium white and that in the center is the liquid so, and um, yellow ochre and red ochre um, and that color is called light green so um, yes uh, i'm going to as you see there's a lot less paint today on the palette and um, the reason being is that we really you know we, it's a small painting we're not going to need that much and this is about putting tones and washes on and tweaking things so um yeah, I'm not going to need that much paint today. So the brush that I'm starting off with today is um, just a small flat square brush. I, I quite like using a square brush. The only time I really use a round tip brush is when I'm doing foliage and things. Um, so uh, yeah. Uh, so what I, the things that I've noticed on this painting as it's dried is number one, there's the the tree needs a lot more work on the foliage. Um, the, the, the gap in the two trees here, that's um, lost between the two branches. And um, we've got a little bit of a bad area over there. Um, and then also I need to either bring some of that through behind the tree or otherwise bring that down. Um, quite what I'm not quite sure yet but I'm, I want to start off also um, toning in the sky so um, I'm going to because that's probably going to be the lightest where the sky meets the horizon is going to be the lightest area so I'm going to just start over here and start lightening that area so in order to do that I'm using some liquid and just mixing in 
so that it's a really nice spreadable soft consistency. So part of why I'm going to move on pretty quickly is um, because this part is really um, your personal preferences. Um, so I've just started to add a little bit of paint gray fingers are great for blending Just going to change, I think, here in the sky to a slightly bigger brush. I'm going to that. Yeah, this is also really, I suppose, a process of glazing. softening out all those edges just put a little bit of blue in there now let's put a little bit of phyto blue Also, really only do this with oils um, because I find that the um, acrylics tend to dry too quickly so you can't um, go back in and, and add so, and bearing in mind our um, fat over Thin rule, keeping this all very thin so that it can dry very quickly. notice as well that I work in various areas of the canvas so that the color balances and spreads out a bit
just removing any marks and bearing in mind that I still want the the, the color from underneath from our, our sketch to still show through so I'm being very gentle just adding bits of story to it yeah that's looking better <clears throat> okay I'm gonna go back to the smaller brush again So this is just about this whole process so in the sky. I'm just going to keep on, you know, coming back and just adding a little bit as I go. I'm softening bits. Remember that the tree is probably going to get um, some foliage. <laughs> so there I was just, I didn't actually pick up any paint, I just picked up some liquid to just smear through there, just blend that. And if you find you've gone too heavy, like maybe that area there, you can just take some kitchen towel or a bit of whatever and just blot some of that away. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Now we need to just address that part of the sky because it needs to be I think that started to lift it up really nicely just by, by just adding a little bit of a glaze and some color over there. Now, <clears throat> I'm, I do think I should start to add um, that foliage. So I'm going to just wipe the brush off for now. And let's go with a round ended brush make. so I'm mixing some sap green with a little bit of the fighter blue and red ochre to create a really dark green and I'm gonna just Use my fingers to create that tree in the distance. And then we need to do something here as well. some dark into this area over right here.
else do I want? So here's a bit of a an area as well that we might just want to think that we need to bring in some green from here. Let's mix some green and some Payne's Grey from that area there because that will be darker. Just using the side of the brush through here, just to, you know, I'm just wanting to bring in some green and I want to darken this foreground a bit more. Um, I think I should. Because if my light is over there, this area here would all be shadow. also be quite dark because it's got just soften all those lines because that's all a bit hard. Right, <clears throat> let me just give this brush a wipe off. to bring in really light bring 
is a yellow ochre. that line out picking up very very little paint it's about adding tones and picking up on your drawing so So your choice of colours is totally, you know, up to you, obviously. Um, I'm just bringing in some red ochre into here. And softening it. soften all of that right down back to the red ochre just get some liquid into that red ochre let's get some more liquid going here just to spread that red ochre and thin it down dilute it down a bit Personally, still a bit concerned about this area. I think that we should make that area a bit darker, but I'm going to just add some green and see what happens. Right, 
Right, and while we add it, let's add, let's work on that because that's now the main area I feel that's lacking on this picture. I'm going to just go in. So we know that the middle of the tree will be darker than the rest of the tree. Lower down. Bringing in a new color here, so I'm bringing in a little bit of that light green because around the edges the tree will be lighter because it will be less dense. So I know that probably look it probably be light here as well. That's a bit hectic on the green, so we'll just dab some of that away. So I'm quite pleased with how this is coming on. Um, just bringing some of those colors into here, because this is where our light comes to yeah let's back onto the tree let's put some more blue of course where we know it's darker so this side is going to have lots of blue. Let's bring in a little bit of Payne's grey in today because that's just looking too blue. <laughs> brush a bit of a wipe, dip it into some liquid and I'm putting on some green, some sap green. There's a lot of sap green and it's a really great colour. And let's just give that a little bit of light through there. That's too much light green. Just scrape some of that off. Just give it a good wiping. So I've just got a little bit of paint just on the edge. We want to just right. We haven't. I've forgotten a little bit about that stem there. So I think we need to go back to the drawing board, ish. Um, I'm mixing some sap green in with the 
paints gray put a bit of the red umber in red ochre I keep on calling it red umber put a little bit of that into there just dip my finger into the sap green because that brown is wrong. some paints grey it was better blue so you know what I just wiped it off the pleasure of working with glazes is that you can just wipe them away just make all of that darker So I think we need some really dark pieces in there. So I'm going to just use my palette knife. So I've just scooped up some paint, just a little. looking better. I think I'm going to just Another great thing that you can use for a palette knife is an old gym membership or a that would also want to be dark. Wow, some dark. 
off onto Hannah. You'll see, even when you trowel the paint on, I'm going to just scrape that, what I've just done now. You can take it all right back really easily. Let's just give that a bit of brushwork. Back to the very small brush again. I'm going to just bring some of that yellow ochre a little bit more of that into here. Just little specks of dappled light coming through there. Yeah, that looks better. Still not convinced on this tree though. Um, I want to add a little bit of depth to here. Bring that in just a little bit over there, and if you can see,
light blue bits there on this, so I'll just mute those down a bit. Just give that a quick rinse. And if it dry off. Now I think we need A little bit of blue here and there. Right, so I'm going to stop the, the camera, I think, for a little while, while I just potter on a bit, um, because this has got to be... Almost, almost. Yeah. So I'm still not happy with the trees, but I will stand back, step back and have a look. And um, always good to step back and look at what you're doing. Um, try not to <laughs> carry on too radically. Yeah, I can see now already, like I need to add quite a bit more dark in there.
So you just wanna, you know, just softening all the lines as they go. There you go, that's better. That's much better. Yeah, so we're gonna stop there, have a break. Um, and um, spend five or ten minutes just looking at the painting um, that you're creating and see what areas you'd like to add or to take away from. Um, yes, this this here can, I think, be much darker. So um, let's have a break and um, we'll resume after we've had a good analysis. I'm going to record the next part on um, time lapse um, because it really is at this stage about adding lots more lights and darks and um, playing with the colors that we have. So I'm going to just continue to add lights and darks, lights and darks, lights and darks, and I obviously want to still work on the foliage of the trees, which still look to me look like lollipops. fiddling around because um, this is too wet it's going to need another day or so to dry so I'm just going to go over the glazing because the glazing is totally your choice you can you'll see exactly what I mean when you start to do it but you can add really amazing tones to your paintings um, and it can also just unify the um, the colors in in the painting without actually altering them that much I've decided to use cadmium red to glaze this with. Um, I, <laughs> I've added some liquid to some cadmium red on um, another paper plate. Just get some more liquid out there. And it is the consistency of maple syrup. So I, I, I really get, so it's, it's not running, but it's quite liquid. And this is the brush that I'm going to use. Just a common hardware brush. Don't know if you can see that. Let me try and... So, load the brush. some of that color off.
Right, so um, I've given it a wash with um, some colour, so you just get a clean towel. And now all that we can do, well not all that we can do, but you can wipe that back where you want it less intense. And it can scrape, you can take this color right back. So let's actually do this. Right, we'll go in and to bring back areas that we don't like. Just remember to constantly change the towel, paper towel, whatever you might be using. wipe back as much or as little as you like. So now you can see how, um, hopefully, how this painting has changed. So that in a nutshell is glazing. Um, I, it really is about, it's a very translucent layer of paint. Um, you're better you, off using slightly more translucent colors. Um, and you can add as much or as little as you like. Um, all of this can be wiped off and the painting can be returned straight back to what it was. So as long as the painting's dry, you can experiment with glazes in any color you want and, and maybe just glaze various areas. So like I did um, the glazes over, you know, those I would also consider glazes um, over the sketch that we did the day before. Um, that really was to just bring out um, the detail that I wanted. You can put as much detail or as little detail as, as you want. Um, it, once that's dry, I, I'm going to give that a, a, a probably also a cadmium glaze just to warm the whole thing up again because I really liked what the red ochre did to the initial um, painting. So I want to bring that kind of old master um, really old painting look back to it so to make it a bit more sepia for want of a better word um, I hope you've enjoyed um, the, the, the creating um, these well this painting today um, uh, as much as I have and um, I hope you've learned lots and I hope I've inspired you to just go out there have some fun let the paint move around on the canvas um, not you know, if, if it's your bag to do a detailed drawing and a, a study, then, then go for it. How, whatever way you can, you do art, you do art your way. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to teach anyone to um, paint the specific um, landscape. It's hopefully the techniques and, um, you know, you learn by watching. So hopefully from watching, 
um, you will have picked up quite a bit. And um, I look forward to you know any comments, any questions. Feel free to get in touch. Thank you very much.